The biggest volcanoes on Earth are located above hot spots in the Earth's mantle. Mauna Loa on the island of Hawaii is a shield volcano formed above a hot spot. A hot spot is an area of the Earth which is always forming magma. The hot spot stays in the same place, but the ocean plates above it move over time, causing new volcanoes to be formed in a string. This is how many of the Pacific Islands were formed. Really strong earthquakes can make terrible things happen. Highways break apart, buildings crash down, fires start, and even worse. An earthquake may last less than a minute, but when it's over, things can be completely changed forever. If you live in a place that might have an earthquake someday, you can learn how to protect yourself in case one happens near you. A cave is a hollow area under the earth. Most caves are formed by underground water that dissolves limestone, a sedimentary rock. A cavern is a large cave, usually with many connecting tunnels and rooms. Lava caves are formed when tunnels that were carved by lava flows become empty. Some mountains are volcanoes. They are made when hot molten rock called magma spills or explodes out of holes in the earth. These holes are called vents. The magma collects in a magma chamber deep under a volcano. The pressure in the magma chamber builds up until the magma pushes up and comes out on the surface of the earth. After it reaches the outside of the earth, magma is called lava. As lava cools, it hardens and builds up on top of the mountain. This makes the mountain get bigger every time there's a volcanic eruption. The magma that forces its way up from the mantle forms huge ranges of volcanoes way down deep on the ocean floor called a mid-ocean ridge. We know this from scientists who have gone down to the bottom of the ocean in submersibles. Rivers and streams may not seem very powerful, but they have helped to shape our Earth. The rivers sort the sediments by first dropping the bigger, heavier grains, like boulders, down into the riverbed, and then carrying the smaller, lighter grains, such as mud, way out to sea. Rivers carve out valleys, and in some places where there are no trees, they can create really, really cool landscapes like canyons. It's hard to imagine, but it's true. All it takes is one little river with a whole lot of patience. In areas of the mid-ocean ridge that have active volcanoes, there are also underwater geysers called hydrothermal vents. They are formed when seawater sinks down through cracks in the ocean floor. Down there, close to the magma chamber, the water gets heated and shoots back up again. Some underwater geysers are called black smokers because the water shooting out of these has picked up tiny dark minerals like manganese. Land that is exposed to ice, wind and water is gradually worn down by them. Here is an example of how it works. Chemicals in rain, temperature changes, and any number of other things can eat away at an exposed rock. The rock gets weaker and weaker until it finally breaks apart. This is called weathering. You could say it's called weathering because of what the weather does to the rock. After this, the rock pieces that are made from weathering get swept away by water, ice, or wind. This is called erosion. All across the surface of the earth, erosion is busy happening. Glaciers form in the very coldest places, like way up high in the mountains, where it's so freezing cold that the snow can't all melt. The snow piles up and forms ice. Thick layers of ice that move are called glaciers. Eventually, the glacier is so heavy that it slowly slides downhill, eroding rocks in its path and carrying them down with it as it slides. Lower down the mountain, when the glacier finally melts, it lets loose all those rocks that were frozen in the ice, and it carves nifty shapes into the land. For instance, Yosemite Valley has deep-sided walls that were carved out by glaciers. Rivers and streams may not seem very powerful, but they have helped to shape our Earth. The rivers sort the sediments by first dropping the bigger, heavier grains, like boulders, down into the riverbed. 
and then carrying the smaller, lighter grains such as mud way out to sea. Rivers carve out valleys and in some places where there are no trees, they can create really, really cool landscapes like canyons. It's hard to imagine, but it's true. All it takes is one little river with a whole lot of patience.